episode of Eat Book Vlogs. Today I'm going to bring you somewhere special. And from the title, I think you can guess who's coming along with me. It's me, <laughs> Steve. It's who's back? Back again. again. <laughs> Steve, have you been to JB before? I only has a transit to KO, but I'm excited to see more. You go JB, right? It's great when you have a limited number of leaves in a year and you want to go on a budget. Let's go, let's go. The train is not moving. <laughs> Yes. The first thing you should get when you arrive at JV is some roti chanai, which is also known as roti prata in Singapore. Have you had roti prata before? Yeah, of course. Okay, the roti chanai here, right, is only one ringgit. Better than Daiso, eh? They sell this at Daiso? No, no. So they also have the egg version, which is two ringgit. Okay, it's a bit of self serving thing here. You have to get your own chicken curry, and they also have beef rendang. Let's try the kosong first. Oh, by the way, this place opens from 6 30 am to 11 am. So it's only for you early birds out there. Mm. Nice little crispy bits everywhere. Mm. It's a bit crispy on the outside, and the inside is chewy. It's like a, an Asian version of a croissant. Mm. Oh my gosh, spot on. Yeah, you can even see them making the roti china. Yeah, it's so appetizing when they make it. I think it will go best with curry. Let's add curry. Mm. It's so much better than the curry. It makes the curry taste a bit more buttery and fragrant. Let's try the, the beef curry. Mm. Ooh, the consistency of this beef rendang is relatively thicker than usual. Mm. Surprisingly, I prefer this than this. It's less spicy as you said. Some people might find that it's a bit too gamey, but I think it's quite a pleasant, beefy aroma. It's got so many different personalities. Mm. This simple roti chanai. During teenage years, I added more sugar and curry. <laughs> it's good, you should try it. Not too much. Uh -oh. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Yeah, it tastes like a sweet curry now. Mm. That's good. And it dials down the spice. You need a bit more protein in your breakfast, right? Okay. You should get the egg version. It's got more bite to it than the roti chanai. It's quite cool how just adding one ingredient changes the whole flavour profile. It's hearty but it feels like for a breakfast. You know... Overall, what I really love about this place is how close it is for the customs. It's like, what, a four minutes walk. Yeah, you can see it from here. It's like a stone throw away. And the price point of this is like one ringgit, two ringgit. Yeah, and the portions aren't like little or like small or mini. It's like substantial. Yeah. Oh my goodness, it's better than eating like fast food breakfast at City Square. <laughs> Don't come too close. My double chin is here to stay. <laughs> Next time we're gonna get even more food and they're still under two ringgit. Ooh. Yeah, and you get to try a whole variety of dishes. Awesome. Yeah, I won't tell you now, but Let's go! Let's go! go. Back. So we're here at our second place in JB, which is Cafe Eat and Repeat, which is a perfect name for exactly what we're doing. Yeah, Eat, Eat Repeat. repeat. <laughs> Everything here goes for only 190 ringgit. So this place is good for people who love variety like me. Like we don't even share food with anyone anymore because they serve food boat noodle style. So you get small portions, but you can try a whole menu of items. It's like a sampler. Mm. And like there's heaps on the menu, and we got them all. Um, so my favourite, my number one pick, is the nasi ayam chicki fabric. Wow, you got I've it! I've been practicing. <laughs> yeah, it's like their signature dish, mm. and it lives up to the recommendation. Number two on my list is the soto, that potato deep fried mm. bowl. Burger deal. Good. And number three is kebab ayam tandoori. Yeah, I'll pick this is my favorite as well because the seasoning of this chicken is not only in the batter, it's also seasoned through the meat as well. Mm. Oh, I really love their mean goose because it tastes just like the one you get in Singapore. It's like not one dimensional. And this is my favorite. It's the mi bandong. When you hear the name, right, you think of the pink drinks, but no. It's typical yellow egg noodles with some nutty sauce on top mm. and chicken slices. After trying everything, right, I find that the noodles dishes kind of stood out more than the rice ones to me. I think overall, all the dishes are like really nice. Cafe Eat and Repeat is about 17 minutes drive from the customs. And you rarely ever get places that, you know, serves everything from head to toe with a single price. Hey, why don't we play Sears with a stone? The loser will finish everything. No way. Okay, half, half. <laughs> <laughs> See, 
Jesus Wait, first stop What the f***? Okay, okay let's so see. that was like a practice run My heart's still pounding from this rock scene, baby Why <laughs> <laughs> So after eating and repeating, eating and repeating, eating and repeating, we're here to do some exercising. We're at Camp 5. Yeah, I know Camp 5 is one of the biggest indoor rock climbing gyms in South Malaysia and Singapore. We'll make sure you conquer your fear of heights. Oh my god! Okay, okay, I'm gonna go down! <laughs> it's all because of you, you, and you! And conquer this wall today. Let's go get changed. Are you ready? Yes. Alright. Let's go. <laughs> Let's go. A few moments later. Hey guys, guys, I really cannot. See, let me go. We're all very proud of you, Kiara. I hear you. <laughs> Now that we've worked up an appetite, where are we? We're at Restaurant Spice Mala Hot Pot. So over here they have over 80 ingredients for you to choose from. Let's check out what kind of ingredients they have. Right. Octopus, sweet. Big juicy prawns. Yeah, it's huge. Oh my goodness. Oh, other than Maggie Mee, they even have flat noodles. I think I'll just leave all the picking to the Mala Queen. <laughs> it looks like you know what you're doing. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Order. I think we over ordered. <laughs> so our food's here. It didn't take long. Yeah, you know it's massive. And it's so astonishing because it totaled up to only 100 ringgit. You know in Singapore if you get this amount of food right, probably have to pay for at least 50 Sing dollars. Whoa. So we got the salted egg and the mala tongla. Yeah, you know honestly, these are two of my most favourite flavours. I, mean, I guess we have to start with the salted egg one first. Well, you know, I'm very surprised and I love how they actually slice up the fish and... Deep yeah, fry it. Mm, yeah. Because in Singapore, right, they just mix it with the vegetables and the meat and everything and the fish just disappears. Mm. I only wish the salted egg flavour was stronger. But I'm satisfied with it because it tastes like the typical zi salted egg dish you get in Singapore. Mm. It's not too sweet, so I actually really like it. They have this mini crab. Why? Well, because you know salted egg and crab, they go well together. The flavour of the salted egg doesn't overpower the flavour of the ingredients. So maybe probably unlike the mala dish, you can actually taste the ingredients in salted egg. So if you're like a true lover and you just want salted egg packed on everything, might not be the dish for you. But if you want to really taste the salted egg, you have some of the noodles. Mm. And then it's like a mouthful of salted egg. I think three good guys are probably the only people in Singapore doing this salted egg siang ko thingy. So I think coming down to Restaurant Spice Mala Hot Pot for this massive bowl is worth it. Okay, next up. Woo! Let's reunite the Mala Queen with her Mala. Oh. <laughs> oh, I think they have many unique ingredients that would totally pair well with Mala. You know in Singapore, the variety of seafood they have usually just prawn, fish balls, very limited. I think the scallops actually really go well with mala. The mala tastes different to the one I had in Singapore. It's not mm. as salty. I think it's way more spicy than it is numbing. I think it's more of a chilli hot pot. It's like slowly killing me but so good. Killing me softly. With this mala. <laughs> and the amount of ingredients they have over there, 80. Yeah, we counted, so trust us, it's really 80. Because we didn't trust them, we counted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They have like mini octopus, scallops, Cutterfish, large intestines, it's mind blowing. And we yeah. barely even tried everything. We finished dinner and we are on the way to our Airbnb when we saw these like bright lights, we made an emergency stop, and now we're at Dangawar Theme Park. Each ride only costs around 2 to 10 ringgit. Whoa. Yeah, and it closes at 12 a.m. So yeah, so the vibes here are like super vintage. You can't really find this in Singapore. Yeah, let's go check this one out right now. This one, let's go. Wake up by my side. Don't care what you can Oh, you just my type. Oh yeah, she know the deal. Like no script. You ain't the first to sell that shit. Champagne with the roof gun. Bump this jam back in the dive. A few moments later. <laughs> Mean 
Meanwhile. Sí, sí, my God. So Steve, what was your favorite ride? My favorite ride was this bad boy. Made you feel like Jack Sparrow sailing the seven seas. Mine for sure would be the bumper car because it was so ghetto but so fun. I almost fell out of the seat and I drew from Wait. laughing. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Good morning. <laughs> Today we're up bright and early to catch some ducks. Ducks? What do you mean ducks? <laughs> we're actually going to this place called Restaurant Ya Wang, which is introduced by Sufon, An, and many of our Instagram followers. So we've caught the duck. And a pig. <laughs> yeah, because when we saw the cha cha sorrow outside, we just couldn't not get it. We have to try the herbal duck first because this is a signature dish. Whoa. Mind blowing sauce. It's so robustly flavoured. It gives this kind of like electrical feeling in my jaw. Just one sip of the sauce, I feel like I'm getting some energy back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It can be a bit salty. You can really taste the duck juices that have been um, dripping into this. Mm. Like the flavour goes through throughout the meat. So it's sweet from the herbal sauce and then like the flavour of the duck comes afterwards. It's a nice sequence of flavours. It's really juicy from the meat to the skin itself. And the skin is still crispy, you know. This is the first time I think something so much sauce, but the skin still has that really crispy texture. Yeah, the fats you bite into it, it's like an extra burst of juice. All right, let's try the pork. The skin's super crispy. I think my favorite part of this is that there's way more meat in proportion to the fat. I love how salty and crisp the crackling is. Let's try the char stew. I think for me, I love the sauce of the char siu more than the char siu itself. Char siu in Singapore usually is a bit more red than brown. This one has a nice char. The sauce is saltier than in Singapore. Like in Singapore, the meat really stands out more than sauce. But I think for here at Yawa, the sauce stands out more than the meat. Like overall, I'm really just floored by how good the herbal duck mm. is. Restaurant Yawa is really close to the checkpoint. Easy to visit and definitely worth a visit. Second stop is Warong Saga and I'm going to let you try something that is uniquely JB. Like you can't really find this anywhere else. The ones that we are more familiar with in Singapore is just called the Long Tong. This is the dry version. It's called Long Tong Kering. It has peanut sauce, sambal and the typical ketupat. Oh, it also has vegetable and chicken on top which is rare because the typical Long Tong that you get elsewhere or soto is just the ketupat, a different broth and some garnishes. But this place is hidden and kind of hard to find but you know you're in the right place when you see like walls full of food. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the heads up. They open at 6.30 till midnight, but this long tong curing might be sold up by 11 a.m. So get a bit of that ketupat rice. Yeah, like the rice looks really interesting. It's so dense. Mm. How do they make it? Good question. So they pack rice into nicely folded palm leaves and then they steam it. Do you like satay? Oh yeah, I love satay. Ooh. Like the things on the stick. Because they use the same satay peanut sauce. It's just that they douse it with sambal chili. So it's like a plated satay dish. Mm. I really love how the rice cake is sweet and then the sauce is spicy. So it kind of tempers the spice a little. And really interestingly, they also have a bit of bihun in the mix. On to the next. So we have nasi lemak. Like look at their rice, it's not just plain white rice. They have things like egg bits and if I'm not wrong, mung beans or yellow beans in it. Hey, where's the chicken? Ah, you are too spoiled by the nasi lemak in Singapore. Like here in Malaysia, right, their nasi lemak's main focus is usually on the rice and the sambal, that's it. It's like any other coconut rice, but it has a hint of ginger. Like the flavour of the rice is really well rounded. Again, this tastes really different. It has a very roasted taste to it. It's not just sweet or spicy. I would have this for breakfast any day. You have the rice with the sambal. All the texture comes from these other ingredients. I don't miss the chicken. Overall, Warong Saga is really different. From the ambiance to the food, even to the rice. Like You have little mung beans and ginger in nasi lemak. That's a first for me. the world's first glass temple. Arumigushri Raja Kaliaman temple. glass temple. Yes, because they're all made of glass, right? Every little sparkle gets reflected elsewhere. So for members of the public, you can come in, but you pay um, a small token of 10 ringgit mm. when you're here. There's even tiles all over the ceiling. Like, there isn't one 
spot on the ceiling that isn't covered with tiles. So we're at Todak Seafood Restaurant. We got some mangoes from the IE and Apek out the front. Yeah, and we're gonna have seafood tonight because there's no JB trip that's complete without any seafood. So we're gonna eat the seafood while looking at the sea. <laughs> and that's just awesome. You guys think that going on shoots... <laughs> <laughs> but this is what we do all the time. One, two, three, action! We asked for like a crab cracker and we got this massive crab annihilator. <laughs> you know what's special about Toda Seafood Restaurant is that they don't have a fixed menu. Mm. So what you do is you just pick whatever seafood you want and just tell them, I want to eat this in that style, I want to eat that in this style and then you get what you want. So for example, for the crabs, right, we got one with the golden sand and one with the chilli crab. And then this one is an Indonesian prawn, there's a clay pot tofu and then we got Sambal kangkong and last but not least, mantos to go along with the crab. So I noticed over there they have all this live seafood. Mm -hmm. So you just get to pick and choose super fresh what you want to eat. All alive and swimming 15 minutes ago and now on your dinner plate. You can see right, it's only 7.15 now but this place is getting packed. So make sure to give Torak Seafood Restaurant a call to reserve. If not, you'll miss out on a good view. And it's got like awesome outdoor seating so you can Really enjoy the sea breeze while you enjoy your seafood. Okay, let's start the crab first. I want to use this bad boy. Okay, let's grab one piece. You know, golden sands, right? Usually you associate to salted egg yolk. But this one, however, hmm. doesn't really seem very salted egg yolk-ish. The garlic totally overpowers the salted egg yolk taste. It tastes more like a garlic crab. But that being said, I love the fragrance of the garlic. The name of the dish might be a little wrong, but the flavor is like spot on. What do you reckon of the crab meat? <coughs> It's so thick and juicy and succulent, but there's still that really briny, crustacean taste to it. You can tell it's really fresh. It just holds its shape. It's got some chew to it. And you know, I don't know about you, but I prefer my crab filled to the brim with sauce. And the sauce they use in this um, chilli crab, mm -hmm. the chilli just goes straight to the back of your throat. It's kind of sweet, but it's delicious. You said that it hits the, the spice hits the back of your throat? Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Because <laughs> I don't think it's spicy <laughs> at all. Like as compared to the chili crabs I have in Singapore, this one is totally a sweet version. Ooh, wait, 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 wait. We can't go without the mantos. Mm. Have one. As compared to the ones in Singapore, this is actually huge, you know. The mantos here might be bigger, but they have lesser flavor. It just tastes like a loaf of bread kind of thing. But hey, it's only one ringgit, so why not? Shall we move on to the prawns? Yes, oh my goodness. I was really damn excited for this one. It's called Indonesian prawns and I've never heard of a dish like that. It's a bit like a laksa, don't you think? It's like so much sweeter, so much more fragrant. I don't know, I don't know what, what ingredients they have inside, but it tastes so good. And the spice they use is really similar to the chilli crab. Mm. So it goes straight to the back of the throat. It's not too hot, but it's got that kick to it. I feel like I can even drink it with a ladle. Mm. It's so good. Let's try the clay pot tofu. It's brimming with ingredients. This really tastes like those hot plate tofu that you get in Zitsa places. And the taste of the, the sauce, it's really creamy. To me, I think this clay pot tofu tastes exactly the same like the ones you can find in Singapore. But the generous portions and prices just makes it so much better. And the last one is kangkong. If you can't handle your spice, yeah, this one, it goes down well. As compared with Singapore, right, this one mm. is no kick at all. I think the heavy taste is much stronger than the sambal chilli which is rare. You can actually give them your budget and the, the auntie are very kind. They'll help you, like introduce you, you what kind of food to get. For all of this, for 50 Sing dollars, how do you beat that, man? And they all taste really good. You buy this and they throw in the view for free. So I think a two oily thumbs up from me. Two more. <laughs> you remember how I say, I love this dish in Malay? Wo. Wo. Shi. Wo shi. Pen tan. You love this dish, right? Washa pentan, yeah. Washa pentan, washa pentan, washa pentan. Dishu pentan, dishu pentan. So we tried to go to the gym, but the gym at this Airbnb closed at 10. So we are going to. Guys, 
I'm hungry. And I was thinking the exact same thing. Oh, I remember Sifon saying that he could buy the whole truck with just ten dollars. Shall we test it out? Yes. Sifon truck. <laughs> We're coming. Oh, you guys are here already. Right now, we're at Faka Look Look. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> right, we came out for a super spontaneous post workout meal. So, for Look Look, right, you mm. can choose from heaps of ingredients and then you can choose a deep fry to boil or to pengkang eat. When you're done with eating, right, they'll mm. charge you based on the colour of the steak. So the prices range from 150 to 450 ringgit. The selection that they have blows your mind. So how you eat lok lok is that you can choose your sauces by mixing them all up or tasting them individually. Okay, now let's try the grilled stuff. I'm going to try the pork belly because I love pork. I love it. You know, it's flavourful like bacon, but the texture is like siu yeah. So it's crispy, juicy, and I would say, right, just skip the boiling. Mm. Go for the good and deep fried stuff. Yeah, save the healthy stuff for earlier in the day. Satisfy yourself and go for the, the extra tasty grilled and deep fried stuff. End of our JV trip. So sad. Yeah, and we're here at Salahuddin Bakery. This bakery is really old. It's open since 1937. Older than. It's almost as old as you. <laughs> no! <laughs> yeah, they're still using a wood fired baking oven to bake their cakes and breads and everything. So we got these. <laughs> okay, let's type the kaya bun. Alright. Yeah, growing up, right, a lot of bakeries in Singapore they do have buns like these. So they sell it in little squares that combine with each other. You know what these look like? They look like hot cross buns that we eat for Easter. I think it smells like whole wheat bread to me. Ah, it's sweet. Slightly sweet. It's definitely more dense than the ones we are more used to in Singapore. It's creamy, but it's still got a rough texture to it. Like a very pasty texture, right? Yeah. This one has a bit stronger pandan taste instead. You mm. can't taste the egginess at all. I think it makes it like a really good snack. Next, we're trying the sugar puff. At first glance, right, I thought it would be really crispy and flaky, but it's soft. Look at the amount of sugar they pumped mm. on it. Come, let's share this. Heartbroken. It's like made of layers. Mm, it smells like the Lao Po Ping. Mm. No, I know what it smells like already. Tai Yang Ping. Really, it also reminds me of the roti chanai we ate on day one. Mm, nicely balanced, it's not overly sugary. I think this will go like really well with like a black coffee. Last one, we got the Bengali curry puff. So this is one of their classic. We got both the chicken and potato, but I don't know which is which, so let's play Lucky Dip. Lucky Dip? I hope I got a potato one. Hey, I can't tell. My chicken, oh! So basically, regardless whether you get potato, sardine or chicken, oh, okay. the chicken, they just add like minced chicken in. Ah. So I got the extra ingredients. Man, they don't skimp on the ingredients. It's like mm. full. Interesting. It's like really smoky. Yeah, it's as if they, they smoked it through. Yeah. Again, this is another taste that Johor really surprised me. Like, it's something I've never tried before. Mm. It's got a slight spice to it. Even though the potato filling is really different from other curry puffs I've tried before, this one has a really strong, earthy, spice flavour to it. Mm. So I think if you were going to choose between the two, go for the chicken one. You get a two-in-one. You know, I would totally come back to Salahuddin Bakery again when I'm here because it's so close to the customs. So, Steve, what are your favourite spots in JV so far? Todak Seafood. Damn it, I was going to say that. Well, I said it first. Okay, fine. It's like a bargain, it's a hidden gem and you get to eat under the stars. Mm, oh, and the value for money is insane. Like $60 for all of us at the table and we got two crabs. That's awesome. My second favourite would be Warung Saga because I love how they have a twist of the classic long tong dish which is so unique and different. Something you never get in Singapore. And the ambiance, so cool. We really enjoyed showing you around JB. Mm. So if you have other places that you want us to see at, comment in the comment section down below. But wait! It's not over yet. In the next episode, we're going to travel a little further out from JB Customs and explore new areas of JB. Stay tuned. But wait, there's
there's still more. Oh my gosh, there's long hair. hair. <laughs> <laughs> Far out. Tastes heavenly.